Well, Paul, just when they, you think you're out, they pull you back in. Sitting cage side, Jim Miller calls your name. How are you feeling about that one? Well, first of all, Jim looked awesome. I love watching him fight. Um, when I s saw the Korean zombie have that walkout and I got inspired to potentially get back into the pool and do all this kind of stuff, anybody that knows me or talked to me, you being one of those people, knew that Jim was the name that was like, if I'm going to do it, I want it to be against a guy like Jim, somebody that's around my age, that's been in the game for a long time. I'm not trying to come back and make a run for the belt or anything like that. But no, sh no Shavkat, no. Yeah, yeah who, whoever that person was that wanted to have me murdered, uh, you know, they're clearly out from my head that suggested that fight. Um, and, I, I, you know, I go back and forth as any athlete does between – feeling inspired and in the gym one day and I train in Philly with a lot of very good hungry up-and-coming guys uh, so you can get a little bit frustrated going into the gym so I'm in and out all the time between going to Marquez MMA and training with Sean and Joe Pfeiffer and all these guys um, recently I've been back on a triathlon kick and I was like man I don't know I don't know if I want to come back anymore and when we talk to Jim in the fighter meetings obviously the people around me are kind of egging it on and pushing me and I was like if he if you call me out, Jim, it's something that I'd be interested in doing. He's like, if you get me a job sitting next to you at the desk, we'll make it a deal. And uh, I think they'll be calling him for at least an audition coming up soon. So when he said that, you know, it's, it's like, fuck, now he's setting me up. All the things that I said, well, if he does this, if this happens, then I'd be interested in doing it. It's just, you know, I got to get back in the gym and see how things feel. Okay, so it's not a definite yes right now. You want to see how your body feels and, and stuff, but well, it's also up to the UFC too, right? Like I have not, I've gotten, I obviously haven't pressed the issue. Sean knew that he did, he he wanted to test me out and see if I was just being flaky, and I've done it in the past. Where I'm like, I'm coming back, I'm gonna make a run for it, I'm gonna do all this, and then I just don't. So uh, I got to see if they are they even interested in that fight happening. Um, but to do it on a, a legendary card like that would be incredible. I got to talk to my wife, too. Uh, I already messaged her. I was like, Jim called me out. She just <laughs> sent me back like the hand on face emojis. Um, but of course, all my friends, all the teammates, all those people, even Twitter, I had people sending me uh, what people are saying about it. So it's definitely a possibility. I got to go home and I'll probably have a fun night tonight and then uh, get back into seeing how the body feels. I'm in, I'm in phenomenal shape. I'm in the best shape of my adult life in the last few years. I just haven't been fighting. It would um, be fair to say that we've seen guys finish their career in the apex. And the apex is great, right? It serves a purpose. Yep. But it's not where any fighter who fought at this level sees how they're going out, right? <laughs> to be able to go out one last time in front of a crowd at UFC 300 against yeah. the guy who fought at the hundreds, is there a better way you could ask to leave, to leave? No, no, not at all. And that's why it's so so tough, right? And so tempting and, um, you know, leaning towards wanting to do it because it's Jim, as he wants to be called at UFC 300, Jim fucking Miller. I mean, he's awesome. He fights awesome. He, especially, I get to see that fight right in front of my eyes, right, where it's a leg kick battle. It's a stand-up battle. Primarily, obviously, he finished him on the ground, as Jim can do. Um, but, I mean... If it's going to be a fight like that, then I think the fans would uh, eat it up because, you know, I'm not shooting any takedowns in there, especially against Jim. I'm not putting my neck out on the line like that. So uh, it, it would definitely be um, a fun fight. Probably be like the first fight of the freaking night, to be honest with you, though, the way uh, these cards stack up. And Paul, I'm a nobody right. now. Just quit. What, is there any downside you look at? It's like UFC 300, the big card, a guy you wanted to, you know, match against and everything seems like everything sets up perfectly are there any downsides when you sit and think about it quietly of course i mean what if what if it goes terribly wrong i've established myself as a broadcaster for a while now i've been trying to get back into acting i'm working on a film now um with a script that i think is amazing with a cast that i think is amazing it's just awesome independent film that i can't talk about because it's you know none of the information is out there yet but that went really well and i'm actually playing a you know an actual acting role it's not me playing an MMA fighter it's not me playing myself it's me really getting back to what I went to school for when I was a young man I went to school for for acting I wanted to get back into that and you know you don't want your last image to be a bad one right so it, it could go wrong um so there's definitely that downside right but that's fighting e every single time ever I, that's the only real downside that I see is what if there is one more injury at the end of my career what if you know, what if I turn down some 
broadcasting jobs and then I get injured at the last minute and I can't make it to the fight. Or Jim gets injured and can't make it to the fight. There's, there's, there's a lot of what ifs in fighting, unfortunately. Did it? What are you walking around at right now? Weight wise? Yeah. <clears throat> On my heaviest, I'm still under 180 pounds. I'm probably about 176, 175 pounds most days. And what a great um, way would be to come back and get the resources of Las Vegas, PI, and everybody that you've known and built a relationship with, both yeah. as a fighter and professional, to just be like, okay, this is going to be the easiest cut and p potentially ever. Yeah, it would be a, a super easy cut. I mean, I'm, I'm a, I walk around way leaner, but I'm also – my strength has changed in the last few years i've been extremely into doing these endurance races right so my legs are machines to be completely honest with you and i can swim like crazy i can run for hours i can bike for hours the upper body has obviously lost a little bit in that um so it would definitely be i would have to quickly start training in in the weight room a bit more not that i'd want to ever get i don't want to bulk back up and then have to cut all that weight all over again which is what i bitched about back when I was actually fighting. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to gain significant weight, but I would definitely want to get stronger up top and not be as skinny as I am now. And, you know, just to add to the temptation, Jim Miller said he would even go to 170 for UFC 300, so there you go. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, if we want to just walk in there and not cut any weight, that, that's even better for, I think, for me and Jim, right? I mean, he's been doing this for how long? We've both never missed weight. Um, him significantly more times than, than I have had to do, but... Uh, that's why I've always admired the guy. That's we. I don't know if people even remember. We were supposed to fight like uh, what seems like a hundred years ago at this point. But um, I, after I knocked out Danny Castillo, the UFC gave me a big opportunity on the newer card uh, against Jim and Benil Dariush ended up stepping in and taking that when I injured my knee. So this is a fight that was should have you know was supposed to happen a long time ago. April 2015. What is it? April 2015. Like come on. 2015. Whatever. That's awesome. Thank you, Alex. Whatever decision you make, I'll co-sign heavy. I'm good. And if you were to win UFC 300, get that trilogy with Charles Oliveira going. <laughs> yeah, sign me up for that. I want a new contract, though, if I'm fighting that guy. Um, he's, yeah, he's a different beast from when I fought him back in 2017, which is another lifetime ago still. What's it, the time frame that you're right here? Oh, sorry. What's the, sorry. What's the time frame you're looking at in terms of like when you need to know if this is going to happen? Well, it'd have to be like, like next. We'd have to be talking next week. Um, I still have a contract, so all that stuff's set in stone. It's just I gotta talk to the family. I also gotta talk to Zach Candido and the guys because there's some shows that I'm obviously set to broadcast that. I don't know how much traveling I want to do. If they're in Vegas, no problem. But, I mean, I'm supposed to go to Mexico City and call all those fights, which is, what, the, towards the end of next month. That would be the heart of a training camp, and that's a big travel to go to Mexico City to a crazy elevation that I'm not adjusted to. So I'd basically get nothing done if I went and did that. So, um, yeah, I'll just I'll, – I mean, I'll, I'll see what my manager says. I'll see what Sean Shelby says. I'll see what, again, my wife really says and my mom, more importantly. Um, no, not more importantly, but oh, I'm going to get killed for that one. We'll cut that one out. Uh, but, you know, we'll see what the, the people around me think. Um, but, well, again, I'm the fittest I've ever been. So, Would you, just since we have you here, what did you think of how Ankalaev looked? Oh, man. You know, I thought he took his time. He knew that Johnny from the last fight, he is extremely explosive and is going to pull some crazy stuff out, you know, really embellishing the body shot to flying knees. He came out, did the same thing, axe kicks chopping the legs, doing crazy stuff, and he was just like, okay. And me and Michael even said it on the broadcast. You could see when he started. The second round came out, and he went whoosh, He went right across and started throwing bigger combinations. I think he felt what he needed to feel. He said he was going to either knock him out or TKO him, and he did exactly that. I thought that was, that was the performance that he needed if he's going to get on the mic and then start calling for title shots. And, and I wonder, do you think uh, a t he deserves a title shot, or do you think somebody like a Jamal Hill would be a good guy for him, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you got to see – how they want to shake it out. I don't, I wouldn't argue with it, but yeah, I just want to see him get at least another big fight or, you know, throw him in there. I mean, we got to see how Jamal is. I saw him tonight and he says things are healing up. He's looking good. You could tell he's chomping at the bit to get back in there. And uh, that's why I want, I want to see him fight for sure. Hey Paul, <clears throat> um, obviously Manel caught missed, uh, missed weight on Friday and you know, you, you have probably the most epic weight miss rant yeah. of all time. 
has your change has your stance changed or is it still strong oh man i you know i know that there's certain circumstances that can slow you down right but if you're on top of it from the beginning even if you get sick or something puts a, a little bit of um a halt to the progress of your cutting weight there's to me there's still not many excuses out there because you know for however many weeks now granted you take fights on short notice there there's a you get a bit of an asterisk next to your name. Like, okay, I understand. You missed. Shame on you, but we understand. But if you've had a full camp, three and a half, it's a lot of weight, man. That's a lot of weight. And I know what these guys and girls do to themselves to make this weight. And I've been there, and I've been through some horrific moments to make that weight when I could have just been like, oh, you know, I'm, I'll just go and pound heavy. I'll give up some of my money. It's just, I yeah, I, I, it pisses me off, especially when we got an amazing event, you know, co-main event like that, a rematch, and a first fight was awesome, very close. These guys are trying to get position themselves for a flyweight title, and then you go and you you blow it. So it's sad to see. I feel bad for him, but you know, it's it's frustrating. What was your what was your and your team's original approach on gym when you were supposed to fight back in the day? Oh <clears throat> my God. Um, no, I mean, it, it, the approach, part of the approach always with me is to just batter your legs as much as, as possible. Um, I was also training with Donald Cerrone at the time, who had already beaten Jim, um, with a head kick from the, you know, obviously I'm orthodox, so my right head kick is there. I'm a taller fighter compared to Jim, same as Cowboy. So obviously we were looking to attack from the right side, to the body, to the head, soften up that inside leg and look for knees up the middle. I was not looking to take him down and test his grappling skills. That's, that's for sure. For sure. And obviously, ever since your last fight, we've seen you more and more in the broadcast booth. Has anything uh, from this broadcast perspective changed your view on any fighting-related topic? Well, you know, one of the things I get to see, right, is there, I get to interview all these athletes and then see how they perform, see where their mental side is. So to just – it kind of really makes you understand that – Showing up healthy and in a good mental place is so important. It's more important than anything. You, it's, let me put it this way. And I've learned a lot from also being an athlete in a different sport, right, and talking to a, the world-class athletes in a completely different running, swimming, biking, all this kind of stuff. You'd be, you're better off showing up slightly undertrained than you are to show up overtrained. If you show up overtrained and out of it, you're if you show up like, man, I wish I would have pushed it a little bit more, but you're completely healthy, you're going to do better. So save it, save it, save it. And I'm a person that did the exact opposite my entire career. And that's also what's so tempting about, let me just dip my toes back in one more time. I've learned so much about being an athlete. I was already a fighter. I'm not one of those guys that was ever lacking that. The toughness, the heart, durability, had that. Pushing myself too hard and being an absolute idiot in training, yeah, I was really good at that. Now I'd like to blend those two things. Awesome. And last one for me, as a broadcaster, and you know, in this MMA space where a lot of people know each other, have friends, teammates, how hard is it to sometimes keep your emotions in check maybe when like a buddy is fighting or someone? I know people like to refer back to the Jared Gordon, Bobby Green accident yeah. or incident. I mean, how, how, how is it like? It's tough. And I've been told I, will, I don't think I'll ever call a, uh, a Jared Gordon fight ever again. Um, and I think me and Jared are both happy about that because it's stressful on both sides, right? It's, it's not easy to have your buddy right there too while you're throwing down, you know? Um, but yeah, it's brutal. It's all the guys in Philly too. You, you, obviously, I want to root for them, but then they're fighting guys now too. That, especially like Joe Pfeiffer, G Gerald Mershart, buddy of mine. These guys are always fighting people I, I'm friends with or trained in, in, in other times. And it's like, oh, come on, man. Um, Andre Petrovsky fought Gerald too. It's like... This, this is not fun. So it's, it's really difficult, honestly. Um, and then it almost makes you sometimes talk more about the other guy because you don't want to be praising your buddy too much. So then they come at you like, hey, man, what, why are you talking about so-and-so all the time? It's like, well, it's better me talking about them than it is talking about you because I'll get reamed out. Thank you for your time, and hopefully you make the best decision for you. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. When you were fighting regularly, when a, a fighter would call you out, your heart rate probably didn't change, but, but you've kind of stepped away. You put the, the fighting game 
away up in the closet and didn't think about it. When somebody yeah. calls you out, did you feel like a little bit of butterflies? Did it feel a little bit different, the call out, having that come out and, and revisit those thoughts and, the, and that old mentality? Yeah, it's so weird, man. It's, 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 um, it's surreal, right? It doesn't seem like it's real life when you're like, oh, I'm done with all that, and then suddenly I'm here doing one of these things, talking about a potential fight um, when I'm almost 40. And that's the thing, too. It was like, I better, if I'm going to do this, that's why I entered the pool. Because I can always say, you know what, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I don't need this fight. I was going through something, and I figured it out. But I can, in a year from now, be like, oh, I'm almost 40. Let me re-enter the – and obviously, USADA is gone now, but we're still in a testing pool that requires you to, uh, you know, have whereabouts and all that. So I tell you, I don't miss any of that either. I'm already, like, I'm getting emails from the UFC. I'm the, I'm the last one to file my whereabouts. Because I'm like, I don't even know if I'm fighting. i got to file all these whereabouts and all this kind of crap. But now it is easier – than it was when um, you saw it. But yeah, tonight I did. I got a little bit of that. And then, of course, everyone around me is yeah. even more excited than I am about it because I knew it was kind of coming. We, yeah. we talked in the fighter meetings jokingly, me and Jim. And uh, so once he got on the mic with Mike, they were like, you should tell him to push it. And I'm like, I'm not telling him anything. If he doesn't call me out, it's definitely not happening. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And I know you have to talk to the family. I know you're, you're going to have some heart-to-hearts with the right people to decide whether it's going to happen. But is there a part of you that if it does not happen, will you be upset? Because it feels like now your head's wrapping around it. Here we are pushing it and here wanting it. If it does not happen at this point, would you feel a little bit let down? You know, I, I don't – everyone keeps saying you're, you're going to regret it if you don't do it. And I'm like, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's true. Um, fighting's hard. It's hard on the body. It's hard emotionally. It's stressful. It's scary. Um, so, you know, I'm not jumping back into it. I know, and now that I broadcast, I see it all the time. I see, the, I see how people are weight cutting. I see how people are, you know, fight week, the anxiety, the, the highs and the lows. And we're celebrating Ankalaya, but Johnny Walker's in the back with his nose twisted on the other side of his face. You know what I mean? There's, there's, there's a winner and a loser most times. And um, so I know I don't think so. If I decide that, it's not right. I, I don't think I might look back and be like, ah, I should have done it, but I, I won't hate myself. I mean, I get to do this. I get to be a professional broadcaster for the UFC. It's uh, dreams coming true all over the place. If I can get back into acting and do that stuff, you know, I've already broken my nose a bunch of times. I don't, you know, I'm ugly enough on camera as it is. I don't need any more, any more scars, but I'll take a few more if it's, if it feels right. What's your desired uh, acting role? Right? Can you do comedy? Do you have, t- do you have comedic I mean, timing? The thing I'm doing right now, I, it, you know, it's, I think it's a funny script. Yeah. And um, 100%, when I was doing shows and stuff and I was coming up through college, I, I thought I was pretty funny. You know, I, and I, I don't know if anybody else did. The, the reviews in Philadelphia at least thought I was pretty good. I was also pretty good at playing intense, crazy people, um, yeah. which is what I'm playing right now in, in the, the movie that I'm working on. Um, and Hack season... Four, hopefully, will be coming back. I don't know. Season three just wrapped. Once the um, the strike let up, they finished season three. I'm in two episodes of Hacks season three, so that hasn't even come out yet. Um, and the way the story is set up, uh, and I don't see myself going anywhere. So hopefully they renew for another season and I get to do that. Hopefully more movies and potentially a badass fight um, in the future. So things are looking up. I got to go get in shape, put the beers down, and... Um, Maybe hold off on racing triathlon for a few more months. Sounds like that's. I was supposed to race April sixth. I don't know if I'll be racing April sixth anymore. Could you imagine if I raced the week before and then fought and won the next week? That'd be a good documentary. Why not? Any film? Any film crews that want us to show? <laughs> yeah, that seems like it keeps you pretty busy. Um, it's a different kind of you know cardio with the triathletes and everything. Uh, how often do you train martial arts, though? Still, um, yeah, it's like I said, it's it, it'll be up and down. I'll I'll go in for a month where I'm doing every pro practice, and then I'll be gone for a couple months, and I'm like die hard. But here's the thing: when I'm training for a triathlon, I'm training 10 to 20 hours a week of endurance training. We're talking 200 plus miles on the bike, 12,000 yards of swimming a week, and probably 30 miles of running. Um, so my resting heart rate's like 36 beats a minute when I wait, you know, uh, I'm getting eight hours of sleep most nights. 
uh, I'm better at 39 than I was physically at, you know, 29. Well, 1,000 million percent, I would beat them badly in a triathlon. Oh, yeah, it's not even, it's not close. Like, I'm on every man jack tri team. It's the best tri team in the country right now. There's only 80 of us from Canada and the U.S., and you have to apply to be on the team. And luckily, I had a buddy that trains here in Vegas, a guy, Justin Reale. And uh, these guys are professionals. These guys are the fastest age groupers in, in the country, hands down, yeah. I mean, my best time, guys, nobody knows anything about this sport. My best time for a half Ironman is four hours and 26 minutes. I mean, that's 70.3 miles in four hours and 26 minutes, the biking and running of it. So still haven't done under 130 for a half marathon yet, though, and that pisses me off. But two, 215 on the bike is my fastest 56-mile bike split. So that's like going 25 miles an hour for two hours, by the way. Now we need to do 15 minutes. Bro, that's the thing. It's... Like, even when I went back, I was getting my ass handed to me by Sean Brady, but I kept getting up every round. I could have done 40 of them, but I wasn't going to win any of them. Um, that guy had an amazing pro I, And, I, you know, hopefully something gets set up for him. And these, Joe Pfeiffer's got a main event coming up. Sean Brady needs a main event. Um, Philly's on, on point, man. They're looking good. We've had some ups and downs. Pat Sabatini took a tough loss recently, but that gym's on the way up for sure. Okay, hey guys, thank you so much, and uh, you know, talk nice about me. Don't, don't don't call me old or anything like that. At least Jim's old too. He's older than me, by the way.